Happy to be joined now by Scott Casenza, Legal Affairs Editor at LibertyNation.com. Today we are looking at all of the legal news this week as it relates to our liberties. And Scott, it's always good to have you with us. Hi, Greg. Well, let's start with the story that had everybody talking last weekend and is still having a lot of people talking as the weekend persists. And that's the story that accused sex trafficker and longtime political financier and fundraiser Jeffrey Epstein uh, was found dead in his prison cell last Saturday morning. Uh, It's the death that launched a thousand conspiracy theories. And what we're hearing so far in terms of at least official explanations is that the corrections officers were were pretty much derelict on the job, falling asleep, massive overtime, didn't do the checks. Um, That's the official explanation so far. I know that you and Tim talked about Jeffrey Epstein still being in jail on a previous episode uh, and had some reaction when his request for bail was denied. So what do you see as the legal significance now of that bail being denied and Jeffrey Epstein being dead in his prison cell as of last weekend? To the bail denial question, you know, I think that it's important to remember that Epstein was denied bail because he was a rich guy. So the judge said that his great wealth gave him access to leave the jurisdiction, and that's why he was denying him bail in in major part. Now, the problem with that is just like you're not supposed to give a rich guy special treatment in the justice system, he's also not supposed to get a worse treatment because he happens to be exceedingly wealthy. Mr. Epstein Uh, put forth an agreement where he would basically agree to any provision that the court wanted to impose on him, Greg. I joked about it in my uh, my piece for LibertyNation.com that he agreed to wear like an explosive collar where he would have to dial in every couple hours, you know, to keep it from blowing up. Like, that's how much this guy wanted to stay out of jail. And unfortunately, this is what happened when when he was subject to it. But since he is rich and he did have this island, was he not a greater flight risk than the average uh, person being accused of something like this? Well, the, uh, the island exists in the United States, so that's one thing. It's not a foreign island, right? So if he were to go there, he could be removed and take it back to custody. But just in terms of the extreme offers that he went to go uh, to agree to, ba- any, to basically offer any bail condition that the judge might agree to, Greg, he said, I'll wear a tracking monitor, a GPS tracking monitor, and I will pay, meaning Mr. Epstein says he will pay for court personnel to live at his home to, to basically oversee that he's not undertaking any plans for flight. I mean, he, he offered to do anything and everything possible to accommodate on his own dime. And let's remember that bail... Uh, and, and pretrial detention is only designed to ensure presence at trial. Mr. Epstein had not been convicted. I mean, the headlines run rampant, calling him all sorts of things. But that's all, he hasn't been convicted newly and obviously now won't be tried at all since he's dead. Let's assume for a moment that the explanation we're getting for how this happened is entirely true. What does it say about our prison system and our, our correction system that this type of incompetence happen in this situation, and you have to assume uh, more than this. Greg, I think the important takeaway for everyone is if this happens to Epstein, what do you think happens to the -the run-of-the-mill prisoner in the federal system? And then what about the -the run-of-the-mill prisoner in the state system? What we do and how we treat our prisoners in the United States is shameful, and that's one of the reasons why I always say when there's any new law proposed, is this worth throwing our neighbors in a cage for? Because that's what we're talking about. 